Hello friends, I welcome you all in this session. As you are aware in previous session we were discussing about ANOVA and we did work out couple of examples. In today's class we will see some more examples on ANOVA. So far we have seen in ANOVA whether there was significant difference exist or not. And in most of the examples we have solved we found that uh, we, we rejected null hypothesis in all those examples and we said that there was significant difference amongst different groups, but we did not find amongst how many groups are between which two groups there is significant difference. So, today we will see two methods they are called Toki test and Tucky Krummer test, but before going on those two tests let us look at one more example on ANOVA quite a simple example. So, a simple random sample of 5 managers from each of 3 plants was taken and the number of hours worked by each managers for the previous week is shown in the next slide and we have to conduct an F test analysis or ANOVA at significance level of 0 0.05. So, you have got this information. There are 3 plants Buffalo plant, Pittsburgh and Detroit. So, these are the number of hours managers worked. Okay. So, first observation 48 hours, fifth observation 62 hours for plant Buffalo, for plant 2 73 and 74, for plant 3 Detroit 51 and 56. So, you need to find out is there any significant difference amongst working hours so far as these plants are concerned. right? So, we will find out sample mean and of course, sum of squared error and sum of squared uh, among variance right or in other words uh, among column variance and within column variance. So, this is how we can calculate it and uh, this would be our null hypothesis that the mean number of hours worked per week by the managers of all these 3 plants are same and not all of them are same is alternative hypothesis. We know that our significance level is this. So, we will calculate all, 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 all means and grand mean and then we will find out the f value which is 9.55 right and then we will look at the table value and we will compare the calculated f value with the table value. So, here f value is 9.55 right. So, if you look at this question then we will reject the null hypothesis and we will say that uh, there is a significant difference in working hours right number of hours worked per week. So, this is a simple question which you can work out using Minitab software or any other software. Let us move on to next slide. In fact, you can solve this question using critical value approach as well. So, this was our table value and the calculated value was 9.55. So, we will reject null hypothesis right. Now, let us look at multiple comparison test. As I have mentioned that ANOVA tells us whether significance difference exists amongst groups or not, but it does not tell significant difference exist between which two groups are amongst which three or more groups right. So, let us look at multiple comparison tests. We know that ANOVA is a technique, it is particularly 
useful in testing hypothesis of differences of means in multiple groups because ANOVA utilizes one single overall test rather than having different paired T test or paired Z test right. So, the advantage of this approach is that the probability of committing type 1 error is minimized or it is controlled. So, if there are 4 groups we will have to have 6 different pairs of T test right. So, this is how you can have the number of pairs if K is the number of groups. In fact, this is what I, we have already discussed, but let me tell you once again. We know that let us say if alpha is 0 0.05, so if two different pairs of comparison are made in experiment using this value, then there is 0.95 probability of not rejecting, not committing type 1 error, right. In other words, let us say the, the probability of not making type 1 error is this and let me let me tell you once again. So, this is the probability of not making type 1 error. So, if there are two pairs, so this is the probability of not making type 1 error, right. This is probability of not making type 1 error. It means this is the probability of making type 1 error. So, 1 minus this is this, right. So, this is the probability of making type 1 error. So, we can say that the probability of committing type 1 error for this experiment is not 0 0.05, but it is 0 0.097. In other words, it is approximately 10 percent, right. Okay. So, if we have 4 groups, then you would be doing 6 T tests and the probability of not making type 1 error is this and the probability of making type 1 error is this which is very high right. So, that is why ANOVA is, is an appropriate technique because it controls what? It controls type 1 error right. Let us look at uh, there is something called posteriori and post hoc comparison. So, post hoc comparisons are made after the experiment when researcher decides to test for any significant differences. So, as I said ANOVA does not tell you within which two groups there is a significant difference, but there is something called post hoc test. It will tell you within or between which two groups there is significant difference. Apart from post hoc test you have got just uh, something called a priori comparison which will help us in deciding the comparison is to be made between which two groups or which comparisons are to be made. So, let us look at first test it is called Tuckey's HSD test or Tuckey's honestly significant difference test. Now, this test is applicable to know significant difference amongst groups when the sample size of each group is same. It takes into account three things, it takes into account the number of treatment level, the value of mean square error and sample size right. So, if we have all these three uh, we will calculate HSD value and for that we would be requiring something called table value q. So, this HSD determines the, the critical value from table and we compare that critical value with this calculated HSD value. So, the HSD determines the critical difference necessary between the means of two treatment levels for the means to be significantly different. 
So, once this is computed you are comparing this computed value with the table value at an appropriate degrees of freedom. So, this is nothing but uh, it is under root of m s c divided by n. So, this mean square error n is sample size and this is what it is q alpha c and n minus c. So, we have to see what is the value of q alpha at c and n minus c degrees of freedom in studentized table. So, this is known as Tuckey's HSD test honestly significant difference test. So, we will take up an example and we will try to find answer right. So, this is a question wherein you have got three different plants and these are the ages of workers. So, we want to find out is there any significant difference in mean age of these three uh, these three set of workers of three different plants right. So, we know that group mean is this for this and for third group group mean is 24.8. So, so the point to be remembered here is that sample size is same in all these groups right. So, because sample sizes are equal we will use Tuckey's HSD test for comparison of means between 1 and 2, 2 and 3 and 1 and 3 right. So, we have already solved this question in previous class and this was our solution right, this was ANOVA table. So, we rejected null hypothesis. What was null hypothesis? That the mean age of all these three plants are same right. So, this was mean squared error just see this is m s e mean squared error which is required in this formula just see this. So, mean squared error is 1.63 5 is the sample size and this value q alpha is to be obtained from table right and this is the table at appropriate degrees of freedom right. So, this is c is number of groups degree of freedom n minus c. So, this is total number of items. So, this 5 plus 5 plus 5 right 15 right 15 minus number of groups so, this 12. So, at 3 degrees of freedom of population number of population is this and at 12 degrees of freedom. So, this is 3 and this is 12. So, this becomes 5.04 right. So, this is value here. So, we have done nothing we have just put the values of m s c n and this q alpha value at c n n minus c degrees of freedom. So, when we calculated h s d it, it, it turns out to be 2.88 right. So, remember that h s d is 2.88 right. So, using this h s d the researcher can examine the difference between means from any two groups of plants. So, any pair of means that is different that is different by more than this are significantly different at this significance level. So, you need to find out the means of differences right. So, let us look at this. So, this is the mean of difference between first two groups right x 1 bar minus x 2 bar. What is x 1 bar? Mean of first group right. What is mean of first group? Okay, it is not there right, but you can easily yeah it is here right. So, let me erase all this. Right. So, group mean is this 28.2, 32 and 24.8. So, 
group mean between 1 and 2 is this minus this right. So, just see this we have to take the absolute difference. So, this is 3.8 difference between x 1 and x 3 3.4 and x 2 and x 3 7.2. So, now what we have calculated this h s d. So, compare this h s d with each of these difference of means. So, if you compare let us say 2.88 and 3.2. So, 2.88 is less than 3.8. So, this value is greater than this it means there is a significant difference between first and second group. So, if the difference is more than this then we will say there is a significant difference between first and second group. What about 3.4 and this again 3.4 is is greater than 2.88. So, there is a significant difference again there is a significant difference. So, we will say that there is a significant difference between group 1 and 2 1 and 3 and 2 and 3 right. So, that is our conclusion right. What we are saying the first thing is there is a significant difference in age of these three plants this what we did using ANOVA, but using Tuckey's test we have said that there is a significant difference between a mean age of plant 1 and plant 2 employees, plant 1 and plant 3 employees and plant 2 and plant 3 employees. So, this is one way of finding answer. Now, there is one more way of finding answer and this is known as confidence interval approach. So, this is an output from uh, a software. So, what we have done here is, so these are confidence intervals. Let us look at this is plant 1 subtracted from, so we are comparing plant 1 with plant 2 and plant 3. First comparison is between plant 1 with plant 2 and plant 3. Now, let us look at this, the upper limit is this and lower limit is this. So, we can use this computer output for making decision. So, we have been given confidence intervals. So, we will we'll look at this point right. If the confidence interval includes 0, there is no significant difference. If confidence interval includes 0, if does not include 0, if does not include 0 there is there is significant difference is not it. So, does it include 0 when we compare plant 1 with plant 2 plant 1 and plant 2 is there any 0 in this limit no. So, this does not include 0 it means there is significant difference between 1 and 2. What about plant 1 and plant 3 now? Does this interval include 0? No. It means there is a significant difference. What about now? Now, we have checked plant 1 and plant 1 2 and 1 3 right which comparison is left now 2 and 3 right. So, plant 2 with plant 3 is there any 0 in it does it include 0 this is minus 4.3142 minus this. So, there is no 0 right. So, it does not include 0 it means there is a significant difference between plant 2 and plant 3. So, there are two ways in which you can find conclusion right. The first is using just by comparing H S D value with the differences of means. So, if if those differences are greater than the H S D value we we'll say that there is significant difference otherwise there is no significant difference. Similarly, 
if the confidence in if the confidence interval does not include 0 then there is a significant difference right. So, let us work out this example uh, using mini tab. So, this is our mini tab window. So, we will enter data for this particular question. So, we have got 29, 27, 30 these are ages of workers of plant 1 right. This for plant 2. all these values for plant 2 similarly for plant 3. So, 25, 24 again 24, 25 and 26 right. So, we will go to stat ANOVA one way. So, first of all responses in separate column right. So, we have just got these three columns C 1, C 2, C 3 select all of them, we will go to options, we will select confidence level. So, we will see what was the confidence level right. So, in this question for this question the alpha was 99 percent right. So, this is 99 percent right and it would be a one tail test as we have already seen it is always a lower tail test. So, we will click ok, then we will go to comparisons right. So, this is uh, error of uh, error rate of comparison is 1 right. So, it is 99, so 1 right, 95, 5 right. So, to k test right and then we will click ok and ok right. So, we will we'll not look at these plots, we will just look at the table. Yeah. So, first of all look at this ANOVA table right. So, P is this right, P 0 right, it means we will reject null hypothesis right, this one conclusion right. The next one is If you look at this, in fact, uh, you you will get confidence interval in such a way that you will not have zero in between confidence intervals. In fact, we can redo it. Just go to state ANOVA. One way we will look at comparison. So, let us look at this test, we can click it over here test and uh, yeah let us look at this. Yeah, These are confidence intervals now right. So, look at C 1 and C 2, it does not include 0. So, there is a significance difference right. C 1, C 3, it does not include 0. So, there is a significant difference. Third confidence interval, again it does not include 0. So, there is a significant difference. In fact, interestingly you can have in fact, p values also right. So, alpha was 0 0.01 right and in this case all these p values are less than 0 0.01. So, we will reject null hypothesis right. So, we will say that uh, there is there is a significant difference between C 1 and C 2, C 1 and C 3 and C 2 and C 3 right. So, this is how you can find out answer to a question on Tukey's test right. So, we will solve one more example on Tukey's test. So, this is the question a metal manufacturing firm wants to test the tensile strength of a given metal under varying conditions of temperature. So, uh, we have to find out is there any significant difference in tensile strength under different varying conditions and these are 5 different varying conditions of 
or these are five different conditions of temperature. So, null hypothesis is that there is no significant difference right mu 1 to mu 5 right and there is a significant difference would be alternative hypothesis right. So, let us look at find out uh, HSD value. So, for this question you need to calculate first mean of squared error. So, this would be the mean, mean of squared error it is 0 0.00061 divided by sample size and this is your q alpha value 5.29. So, at the end of the day this is your HSD value 0 0.0588. So, what we concluded in previous example that if this value is is small than is smaller than all those differences it means there is a significant difference amongst all those groups. In other words if the mean of if the mean difference of x 1 and x 2 is is greater than this then there is a significant difference. So, first of all what we know we need is we win, we want to find out differences right x 1 x 2 then second would be x 1 x 3 right. So, x 1 x 2 difference is this is not it then x 1 x 3 x 1 x 4 x 1 x 5. So, these are 5 differences right. Similarly, x 2 3 2 4 2 5 then 3 4 3 5 4 5 right. So, these are the differences you can easily find out. Now, let us compare the first difference right x 1 minus x 2 right this difference is 0 0.096 ok. What about this? So, this value is greater than this value. So, it means there is a significant difference between group 1 and 2 ok. So, there is a significant difference between group 1 and 2 1 and 5 1 and 2 1 and 5 what about 1 and 3 1 and 3 if you look at these two these two right 0 0.042 and 0 0.055. So, this is smaller than right. So, there is no significant difference between 1 and 3. So, the significant difference between 1 2 1 5 2 3 2 4 2 5 3 5 and 4 5. Now, this is the conclusion we have got from ASD value the same conclusion can be find out uh, can be found out using uh, confidence interval approach right. So, this confidence interval uh, intervals of the different groups right. So, let us look at this. So, what is our uh, 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 when do we say that there is a significant difference? If class interval does not include 0, there is a significant difference right. So, if you look at this particular question, there is a significant difference between 1 and 2. So, this is 1 right, this is setting 1 and 2 right, this is 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 1 and 4, 1 and 5. So, between 1 and 2 let us look at this this and this is does this interval contain 0 does it include 0 it does not include 0 it means there is a significant difference. Similarly, 1 and 5 let us look at 1 and 2. So, this is minus 0 0.12 sorry this plus 0 0.1 is the upper limit and lower limit is this it means there is 0. So, there is no significant difference between 1 and 2, but there is a significant difference between 1 and 5, 2 and 3, 2 and 4, you can see 2 and 2, 3, 2, 4 and 2, 5. So, this is 2, so 2, 3, 2, 4 and 2, 5. Now, this is 3 and 4, 3 and 5, 4 and 5. So, there is a difference right 4 and 5. So, 4 and 4 and 5 right. So, does this include? So, this interval 
does not include 0, it means there is a significant difference right. So, this is the output uh, this computer output output from any software and this is an over table as well. So, from looking at here you can say that there is a significant difference amongst. Uh, so, by looking at this we, we are rejecting null hypothesis right and there is a significant difference amongst one of those five groups right and from confidence interval approach we can find out with um, in which groups there is significant difference right. So, let us work out this example uh, using Minitab. So, this is our Minitab output. So, we will we'll delete the previous output first. So, let us look at these values. So, this is 2.46, it's 2.4, just keep in mind that the, the sample size of each of these groups is same 2 2.46, 2.49, 2.50, 2.49, 2.47, 2.48, 2.46, 2.44 and the last group fifth group is 2.56, 2.57, 2 2.53, 2 2.55, 2.55. 2 so, let us see uh, the output right. So, ANOVA one way. So, this is C 1 to C 5 select all these click over here this is in separate column yes that is correct. So, we will at, at what test significance level we were testing that hypothesis just a minute. So, it was at 99 percent significance level right. So, this 99 percent significance level ok. So, we will have a right tucky test everything is fine. Yeah. So, we will look at now this confidence interval right. In fact, uh, you can look at even p value as well right. So, just by looking at p value itself you can say that there is a significant difference between first third this C 5, C 1, C 3, C 2, C 4, C 2 right and C 3, C 5, C 4, C 5. Again look at confidence interval does this interval include 0? It does not include 0, it means there is a significant difference between C 1 and C 2. Does this include 0? This confidence interval does not include 0, so there is a significant difference between C 4 and C 5. If you look at this, let us say this ok. Now, this includes 0. So, there is no significant difference between C 3 and C 4. So, this is how you can use Tucky's test to know the significant difference between groups. So, with this let me stop here in next class we will we'll see a method wherein uh, we will have an example where the sample sizes are different in each of the groups for which you would be taking up for solution. So, thank you very much.